So as we go forward in time, the pressures will get quite severe. Some of the, the imagery actually shows it to the point where some people, under the influence of this extra magnetism, so to speak, are walking along and just kind of like seize up, stop. They're not dead or anything. They're just momentarily paralyzed, standing up, drooling, and not necessarily sensate at all. So over the next couple of years, generally, what do you see? Is it going to be tough for us? As the toughest anybody has ever seen, so tough that people will make monuments to this time the way that that others used to make monuments, you know, to the great Roman Empire, that kind of deal. So what we've gone through over the last six months or so is nothing compared to what's going to happen in the next couple of years? It's not even the warm-up act. Yeah, yeah, we've just put on our our suit. We haven't even started to do the push-ups and start stretching our muscles yet. In all areas, all fronts? Correct. Yeah, and, and, and in fact, the, the disappearances meme is starting just now to show up. All of the folks who the, – the cultural icons are rolling over uh, even as we speak. I mean, we've got uh, uh, Farrah Fawcett passing, uh, uh, Billy Mays and Ed McMahon. Walter and Cronkite just Cronkite. left us. Yeah. yeah, the whole list. And so, so Michael but, Jackson, you can't forget about him. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, of course. And, but 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 to us this is a this is a temporal marker. Uh, we'll have more disappearances. Uh, we're still waiting for what Cliff the the royalty types, the royal family Correct. types, and some some sort of super yacht that gets involved in a Marie Celeste kind of an incident. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. And, and we huh. had actually uh, again this is prequel stuff, but much of the Air France 447 crash met some of of the linguistic expectations. But once again, like in the in the case of the uh, Columbia disaster, we have a very hard time linguistically separating events that happen on the ocean from events that happen with spacecraft and aircraft because they both have crews. Uh, and, and there's just a lot of linguistics that uh, are used in both places. Uh, you explain that a little bit more. What do you mean by that? Spaceships, marine ships, you know, transport ships, and they, they, a lot of the terminology, of course, especially in the U.S., coming from the Navy and the Air Force and the Air mm-hmm. Force and so on, they, they replicate each other. So the linguistic structures for uh, those kinds of ships prowling around on the water are, are replete with the same sort of language that we would see with uh, the spaceships of all kinds. Yeah, in fact, uh, some uh, aircraft and, and spaceships will use terms like uh, doing so many knots, for example, as a speed reference. Well, knots are, are commonly used in aircraft and also commonly used in ships, but they're not the kind of thing that you use on the freeway. And yes. When we had the Columbia spaceship, uh, spatial disaster, of course, we're talking about Columbia, gem of the ocean, so yeah. there's these other yeah. archetypes there as well. It, it becomes something of a, of a problem for us when you're drilling down through ten and 20,000 words looking for differentiation. And so at some point, we're kind of like mucking around with our eyes closed and, and cleaning out a pond and, and trying to do it by feel. And, oh, yeah, I think that's a water lily I've grabbed. I'm going to haul it up. If what we have done is merely the warm-up act for what is about to happen over the next couple of years, I'm concerned that people are at their maximum stress level already. Oh, no, they're going to go way beyond. How can they do it, though? How can they handle it? A lot of them won't. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem, all right, isn't it? Yeah, we, we coined a term called muckers, and it's when people are just going to go amuck. And it, it will be in many regards like the police used to face with people that had inhaled uh, PCP, that is to say their ner- the, the victim of this, their nerves are all shot, but they have superhuman strength, but they're not thinking, but they can focus real clearly on right. a single objective, so on. And that's what the mucker phenomenon is going to be like. And we've seen evidence of it with the shootings and so on, because basically it's a, it's a violent way of self-suicide that tries to take people out as you go along. We're going to see an increase in that, and that's simply a, a non- effective coping mechanism that gets them out of this intolerable stress that they're in. It's a a very rough time for everyone. You're going to see this massive difference between the haves and have-nots? Correct. And it's going to get so bad that uh, starvation is going to be a real issue, which is going to lead to uh, a revolution from the bottom up at the same time that, that global corporatism is collapsing from the top down. And you're talking worldwide or just here? No, uh, well, uh, globally, but there will be some places that are more secure than here in the U.S. But, of course, basically what's happening is that the giant American empire is running out from the middle. And it's like a uh, pumpkin that is rotted out from the middle, and pretty soon the top and the bottom are going to meet and, and, and as it collapses. And we're sort of 
where all the seeds and stuff used to be. Some parts of the world, George, will not have as far to fall because they are still relatively closer to self-sufficiency. Uh, the further you are up the uh, uh, the lifestyle the ladder, yeah, food, food chain, yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's Cuba will be good. Uh, yeah, Cuba actually c could survive, uh, and there may be parts of, of South America, which brings, of course, up the question, uh, why are some former presidents owning land in, in places like, what is it, Cliff, the Alta Plana down in Paraguay? Sure, sure. Paraguay, yeah, yeah. 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 Thousands so, of acres. And, and areas in Th Siberia are going to flourish uh, all across the northern tier. Well, all the way but I'm not the moving way. to Siberia, and I don't think many other people will. No, but they'll be feeding a large part of the populace. You have to bear in mind something that before the Bolshevik Revolution, the single most effective food system ever created on this planet, capable of feeding the planet at the time, was the, the Russian system of small uh, village farms. They exported more wheat than the planet could consume. And something close to that will arise again as temperatures change and everybody starts shifting north. An analysis of history would suggest that that's one of the reasons that the, uh, what we call in model space, the powers that be, uh, likely were so supportive of the Bolsheviks because they effectively, through collectivization, disassembled that. And once you've got scarcity, you can drive price. Correct, and control people. And basically, we're seeing a lot of that now expressed in such weirdnesses as the uh, rush to uh, vaccinate against a non-lethal uh, uh, man-made disease. And that brings up all kinds of issues about whether there is, in fact, uh, let me just put it flat out, given the amount of evidence that's out there in-universe manifesting itself, as well as our data, a conclusion that could be drawn with some um, uh, support behind it is that the powers that be have on their plate an agenda for the destruction of a large percentage of the populace, and it's already been in, in place. It's I would believe that. Year. I would believe that. We've talked about that, but you're beginning to see proof of that, aren't you? Correct. 2012, does it come up at all? Does that show? Yes, but we have to bear in mind that our granularity is really only good going out about 19 months. Thereafter, our data rate falls off significantly. And why is that? That's because when, we, when, I, when I first, I have to take responsibility, when I first sat down and started assigning numeric values to emotional components of words within the English language, my concept was somewhat limited, and of the 300,000 words that I'd done, I never really extended out much beyond four or five years, and the, that number is very small. So... In essence, most words are more effective in the immediacy period than in the long term. When you start getting into long-term language, really you're looking at things like uh, legal language that will affect your life for some period rather than slang and common terms. So our language necessarily clusters towards the immediate, but at the same time I, I have an inbuilt fault there because I probably could have extended it out further, but I don't know how much more um, detail and value I would have gained. But we do see 2012, and we do see all kinds of problems resulting primarily from this big squeeze, the giant magnet effect. Have you found that some areas of the Internet seem to be stronger, maybe more accurate, uh, that uh, helps feed the uh, web bot? Uh, not areas of the Internet, but languages. So, for instance, there's a real mystic bent to Russian. And so within the Russian language that we've got modeled, which is relatively small mm -hmm. given their com complete lexicon, we get a lot more prescience out of that than we do out of American technical language, for instance. That's it. That's, it's fascinating work. Uh, but I bet sometimes when you get the data, you don't really want to look at it, do you? I, exactly so, sir. It's, it's a question so of I, uh, yeah. swimming in the sewer because it's, it's all the negative emotions. Again, an artifact of our processing. It's easier to find negative emotional psychic leaks than positive ones, and so we have a tendency to concentrate on the negative. I'm going to next hour throw out some various topics, and you tell me, uh, George and Cliff, if they've shown up and what they mean to all of us. So, George, give us some websites here. Some web? I'm sorry? Some of, some of the websites that you have. Oh, my website? Sure. Oh, urbansurvival.com. And uh, every morning at uh, 8 o'clock, I do a rundown on the economy and how the House of Cards is falling today. Uh, I, I often say that Cliff's site, www.halfpasthuman.com, <laughs> says that uh, here's when the sky is likely to fall, and urban survival is the, uh, okay, here it comes, here's the headline that says sky is falling, and PeopleNomics, which is my subscriber site, is if the sky is going to fall, 
here are some steps you may wish to consider in advance. So you just don't get hit. And we'll talk about that next hour when we come back on Coast to Coast AM. I'm George Norrie. And now we're going to get into some of the aspects of the future and how it affects all of us in just a moment on Coast to Coast AM. And welcome back to Coast to Coast. George Norrie with you. George, you're in Cliff High with us. George, let's talk about the economy. What, uh, what do you see? Well, unfortunately, the economy is going to transition from hopeful signs of green shoots to, oops, guess not, and that should begin to occur about the 22nd of August or so. At that point, uh, something which will have actually started taking place in mid-July ought to come to light, and from that point on, uh, the markets should begin to decline, accelerating around the 14th or so of September through the equinox on the 21st. And it's in that range that we start getting some indications that there may be a lockdown, uh, something like a bank holiday or market closures, Mm. uh, something on that order. And then uh, things continue to decline during the month of October until we get to the 25th or so when it's either we're bombing Iran or mandatory vaccinations or something like that sets up a uh, tremendous wave of stress such that the Obama administration is in full-fledged retreat or defensive position by the first week or so of uh, November. That's pretty soon. Yeah, and pretty grim. Yeah, and pretty grim. And pretty grim. What about North Korea? Do you see anything there? Yeah, Cliff, you better take that one because that, that's a very touchy one. Yeah, the um, uh, the crazy man who runs that country, uh, we can't call him a nut job. I mean, George and I are nut jobs, but um, the crazy <laughs> man who runs that country is going to pop up with a big ego rush around November as well. Before he chucks it in and dies, I think. Uh, well, it could be actually the, that the linguistics would support uh, him dying in a major uh, reformation of the country in March of 2010. Basically, North Korea will be an active subject from about the same time that the Obama administration runs into their international crises in uh, the 5th or so of uh, November, and uh, in North Korea will continue to trouble us all through November, December, and up to March, and then they kind of fade. Now, the language actually would suggest uh, a number of different reasons for that fading, but... Um, uh, at this level of guessing on the uh, on the details, it, it truly is a guess. But they're going to be an annoyance at least that much. In uh, with these problems, of course, uh, that may or may not be caused by us. Maybe other nations get involved. Who knows what will happen? Uh, is there a way out of this? I mean, are these events that will happen or could happen? That's a real good question. We don't know. We don't know enough about what we're doing. Uh, George calls this a time machine, but really it's it's not even the time machine. It's the power pack that, that we should wrap a nice machine around, and all we've got is the power pack, really. It could be that we're reading some form of uh, event that has already happened in, in a near-term template of the future, so to speak, that's being pressed upon us. Or it could be that we're getting an impression of a probability, and it need not come out this way. Now, our problem is this, that if we were to assume the situation of the Internet being in existence and our software being in existence prior to the Cuban Missile Crisis, and we were a few months away from that crisis reaching its peak, I could not tell you that we wouldn't go to war because the brinksmanship that was exhibited at that the peak of the Cuban Missile Crisis in the early 60s for all the kinder out there uh, was such that it was held right up to the last minute. There was tension right up to the last minute. Oh, absolutely. Kennedy had a speech written explaining why he supported the bombing of Cuba, which we never did. I mean, that's how far they had taken this. And we wouldn't have been able to tell with our software that we would not have actually gone to some level of war from there. So I can't say for certain that Israel is going to attack Iran, but I can say that the linguistics support the idea that if they attack, things go horribly wrong and the planet suffers greatly. And that, that's two separate linguistic issues. It's difficult to explain without all of our model space and all right. this laid out.